Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is the Series 7 Guru coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas with another explication request. Uh, I don't know. The person didn't even know how to get started on this. So <laughs> but we'll do all eight things. I call it don't hate the eight. You want to stay menu driven, particularly if you're struggling. And so the first thing you want to do in advanced options or options in general is identify what you're looking at. Are you looking at a straddle, a combo, you know, a flamingo, you know, a condor, a butterfly? I'm joking. If it's a multiple or advanced option strategy, it's going to be a spread or straddle. And so uh, this is a spread. What we're spreading is the difference in the premiums. So test question number one is, can you identify a spread? Long and short, the same type of contract, and we're spreading the premiums. Number two is can you calculate, or excuse me, can you determine debit or credit? That's number two. Number three, exercise or expire. Number four, widen or narrow. Number five, max gain. Number six, max loss, break even, bullish or bearish. Those are the eight testable items. Don't hate the eight. Now, one thing I would recommend, I'm going to run you through all the things on this spread for this test taker, all of the eight potential test questions uh, from the position. As I said, the first thing is, can you identify? Now, until you get good at contract specifications, you know, because one thing that a lot of people sometimes do is they just stare at this screen and go, I don't know, B. And that's not what you want to do. So what I have here is a choice to sell BFD at 40 and an obligation to buy the stock at 30. So that's what's going on in terms of these contract specifications. All right, the next thing I want to be able to do is determine debit or credit, because if I get that, I can rock and roll. If I get debit, debit exercise widen, DEW, Mountain Dew, just do the do. You know, if you're wide like Dean, you need to exercise so we can really rock and roll. If we get credit, we go credit expire narrow, we're going to be in pretty good shape. Uh, we should know that if we paid for an option position, if we buy a call or buy a put or buy a straddle or buy a spread, the worst case is we lose our money. And we should know that if we sell a call, sell a put, sell a straddle, sell a spread, the worst, uh, best case is we keep it. All right? Those are some common themes. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, next thing we're going to do is number two, determine debit or credit. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to net the premiums. And so we have more money out than in here. So this is a debit spread because we have more money out than in. As I mentioned, once you get that, you can rock and roll because debit exercise white and go together all the time. If this spread gets exercised, I'd be buying the stock at 30. Somebody's gonna stick it to me at 30 and then I'm gonna stick it to the next guy at 40. That's pleasurable, that's profitable. Don't be thinking about it until you get the menu done. The hardest part to get is this idea of the premiums getting larger or smaller. You know, what widen means is if I go to offset these transactions, right? I offset this thing. I need to be, a, be able to come up with more than 4.4, uh, 4, right? Points. I need, you know, 7.4. I'd make three points. Hardest part to get, don't need to get it. Because debit exercise widen goes together all the time. So we've done four of the eight. Don't hate the eight, eight test questions. We've identified this as a spread, long and short, same type of contract. So it's a put spread or call spread. There's a put spread. Secondly, we've determined it's a debit. We've determined that we want the contracts to be exercised at expiration. We want the difference in the premiums to widen. So the next thing we got to do is max gain and max loss. So kind of a trick, the whole point of a spread is I'm saying that I want to play between 40 and 30 and I don't want to play anymore. You know, I think of it as a floor and a ceiling. You know, there's a ceiling at 40, 40 or higher, the puts expire. You know, there's a floor at 30. That's the whole point of a spread. All the action takes place between the strikes. So there's only 10 points to be made or lost. Now, good news for us as a test taker, you know, as a trick, we know that whatever the gain and the loss is in a spread, it has to equal the difference in the strikes. So we can eliminate any offer to us that doesn't equal 10. Now, of those two numbers that equal 10, we already have one. We should know that when we pay money, the worst case is we lose it. So 40 or higher, we're going to lose that uh, net debit. Now, again, if you don't get this idea, then you got to memorize that the maximum gain in a debit spread is the difference in the strikes less than that debit. I just think that's a mental mess. 
I personally think it's just easier to say, okay, well, you know, there's our gain, right? Uh, by the way, once you get the menu done, then you can think about it. If somebody sticks it to me at 30 and I stick it to the next guy at 40, I'm to put E at 30, to put ER at 40, I make 10. Less the 4.4 means I make 5.6. Okay, the next thing we got to do is the uh, break even. And the break even, we have a nice mnemonic device for that push. Push, mnemonic memory aid device. That stands for put, subtract from the higher. So in a put spread, the way we get to break even is we're going to take the higher strike. We're going to minus the net premium. Doesn't matter whether that net is a debit or a credit, doesn't matter. It's going to be 40 minus 4.4. So that's our break even. That's, that's test item number seven. And then the last thing we got to do is determine bullish or bearish. Bullish or bearish. So where do we want the market price of BFD to be in relationship to that break even? And uh, the larger premium dominates. So if I'm trying to figure out what's going on, it's always going to be the option leg. The leg is not testable. That's what's the term for that. The dominant leg is always going to be the one with the greater premium. By the way, even if this was missing premiums, I would know that's the dominant leg because higher strike put contracts always have greater premiums. So I don't know uh, what uh, part of the eight testable items you were struggling with as you know, you just sent me the position itself. <laughs> so those are the eight things. If you do these eight things that I've recommended to you, I'll link to a lecture called Don't Hate the Eight. Eight test blinds. If you can identify it, you can determine debit or credit, exercise or expire, widen or narrow, max gain, max loss, break even, bullish or bearish, whatever they're asking on the test, you got my guarantee that you have got the answer. So make sure you practice, you drill, you rehearse, uh, so that when you get these, you can do them as a matter of routine. Uh, remember, inch by inch, your Series 7 is a cinch. Yard by yard, your Series 7 is hard.